Hi, welcome to a demo on perspective grids and how to lay out perspective for your concept drawings. Um, in this demo, we're going to be taking a uh, concept character sort of person, an illustration anyways. Uh, that smaller. There she is, riding a tiger. And I want to do a background for her, and I want it to be in perspective. Uh, so the tiger's going to be running through a room. Um, so I have gone on the internet and found a perspective grid. Here, I'll bring it in. And you can see that perspective grid is a one-point perspective, but it kind of looks like a room. And now I'm going to um, extend these. I'm going to hold down. Hold down Control on a PC, Command on a Mac, and stretch these into the corners. See, I can move them individually. And I just want to have these perspective grids line up with the corners just to make things real easy. OK, so all of a sudden, my character is in a room. Um, and uh, I don't want to edit the perspective grid. <clears throat> Um, but I am going to, to lock it so I don't accidentally edit it. And I can actually lock the character, too, because I probably won't have to do much with that either. Um, all right. So uh, to do lots of things, but the one of the easiest things to do is to um, create a gradient. And uh, I don't want this color. I'm going to go purples because she's all orange, uh, and that just wouldn't do. There, so what I want, and create a new layer above my perspective grid. And I just go like that. And uh, I don't want this to be uh, a gradient smart thing. I just want it to be a regular rasterized gradient. Uh, so I'm going to merge it with another layer, which rasterizes it. Um, I'll turn on multiply so I can see what's going on. And now we have color. And the gradient, you can see, kind of adds to the flavor of the room with the light color up above and the dark color down below. It automatically kind of makes it look like a room. Great. OK, so um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play up that whole room thing a little bit. I'm going to hide the main character. And then to take the um, lasso tool, the selection tool. Not really a lasso. I'm going to select the top of the gradient here. And I'm just going to use hue saturation, and I'm going to lighten it up a little bit like that. So it's still got the same gradient. Oops, accidentally. Yeah, yeah, of course there's nothing there. OK, now I'm going to do the same for the ground. And I can go way down here. It doesn't really matter. And I'll make that darker. Image adjust, hue saturation lightness and I can up the saturation on it a little bit. Great. And then the last piece here, I did it again. <laughs> the last piece I want to do here is the background. And I'm really just doing this to differentiate these planes from one another. Uh, they'd be fine as they were, but this really, for the purposes of this um, demo, like for instance, if I turn this off, uh, this is what we're looking at. And it's hard to tell where the background is. Uh, but if I come in here and hue saturation, and I up the saturation or lighten it, uh, let's see, if I push it back, I'll make it darker, could make it lighter. And you can see that instantly 
looks like a room just by following these cutouts and changing the hue and saturation of these three pieces, the roof, the back wall, and the floor. Or you could just change this wall and this wall, oh, no, and this one. You have to change, you don't have to change three of them, but that's good if you do. Okay, so then um, the next thing I want to do is put some windows in, or a door in here. So let's do that. I'm going to put a door way over here. So I'm going to follow these lines up the wall. Doop. Doop. And I'm going to come in here and create a new layer. I'm just going to give it a color for now. Use the fill tool on a new layer in a selected box. And you can see that box is now uh, perfectly in perspective to the grid because I'm following this line out, this line down, this line out. Uh, we can do the same thing with windows. I can put a window over here. And if I change my color to like a blue or something, it'll look like more like outside. Now I can put this on a new layer. I'll do that. Always best to separate your layers. You can, I mean, we could all have we've done all of them here on this one layer, but I'll keep the doors and the windows separate. Great. Now, if I take this window here and I duplicate it, I can drag it over here, and now it looks like an open window, right? like a shutter that's open. But if I go um, edit, tr uh, transform, flip, edit, transform, flip horizontal, then it should match up directly across it. So if I follow this line down here and up here, you can see that this wall is symmetrical with this wall. I can also, oops. I can also duplicate that window again and move it down here. And if I shrink it, you can see oh, that the perspectives, I blew it, I messed it up. You can see that the perspective almost works. <laughs> but we can, don't worry, if you mess things up, you can always uh, grab the corners and just make them fit to your perspective grids. That's kind of why you have those perspective grids. So you can make those changes. But that should have done, yeah. I should have been able to scale that in a little bit, scale that up a little bit, and it would have been fine. I'm not sure where I went wrong. I'm just going to let it go. Great. So now we have a bunch of windows. I'm going to make one more thing here. I'm going to select um, a big area here. And I'll make this a door, too. And you can always go in and use your shape tools. Let's make that slot piece like that. I need to make this a tiny bit bigger. Okay. 
I also really didn't want the stroke on it. And now I can select both of these, this shape and this shape, and I can merge those layers. And I have one shape, and I got a big door on the back. So say I wanted a little door, like the same looking like this, um, I can duplicate that layer, bring this over here, and then holding down the um, control again, I can grab this middle one and swing it around like that. So I put it there and I put it there. And you can see now it's in perfect perspective. Actually, this should be up here. Once again, it's a good thing there's a bounding box around these. There. Now it's in perfect perspective. Stop it. You go up there. You come down here a little bit. Enter. Ah. I wonder why it's doing that. Oh, it's just readjusting. Okay, we're good. So now I can get rid of the green door. <clears throat> and we take in a shape that isn't a square and put it on the side. Uh, we can also uh, build stuff like tables. Um, oops, make sure you're on a new layer. We want to raise that up, but we need to make sure that if you're going to do that, um, we have to come over here to the wall. There's where we made our table. So we'll follow that line in the back there. And if we raise it up, it has to still meet this line. So we need to bring this over like that, and this over so it's flat. And now we can move this over here, and then we need to reorient it, trying not to mess with it too much. So it's there. Now, illustrationally, in an illustrative way, deselect. Um, we want to make sure that we're crossing, we're, that we're not, if we if we do do a table, right, we want to make sure that it's not aligned in the corner here because it'll look weird. So we want to break that line again, remember. Uh, so if we want the table out in the middle here, go like that. And then... Um, We can go in and draw some legs. And the other one you won't be able to see. And then I can also hold down the shift key. Or I can take these off, make my brush a little smaller, and hold down the shift key. Click there, hold down shift, and click there, and it'll draw a little line. And we can do that here, too. And we have a little table. 
Now we can move that anywhere we want. We can make it really small. Maybe our table's back here. But just remember to kind of adjust it to try and match this perspective that's going on here. Tiger Lady back in. Oops. Walker. Lock the gradient. Unlock the Tiger Lady. Now you can use this perspective grid to uh, affect the shadow as well, All right? So if I duplicate this, I take the lower one and I go, uh, let's move that down a little bit so you can see what's going on. There's the lower one, image adjust, use saturation, Take off all the lightness and the saturation and the hue. Turn on multiply and then make it a little bit transparent. And then I can put that on the ground and you can see uh, I can use the perspective grids to kind of figure out where the shadow would fall. Um, and this is assuming the light is like right in front of us, depending on where the light is. Something like that. And again, if I take the gradient out, then all this stuff starts kind of working on its own. It's all in kind of cool perspective. All right. Um, the last little thing I'm going to show you, because this is running low, um, is how to put uh, pictures, found pictures, um, in the windows have them work so i'm just going to pick some clouds at random here's some clouds and then i'm going to go to our window here and i'm going to use this tool to select it and go uh, edit paste special paste into i had i selected a i copied a cloud thing right from the internet i had the picture in my buffer that's why it went into there and then i can just take these little square using the control and move corner thing. I can warp this so that it matches um, inside the window. And if I wanted this to be a continuous picture, like across multiple ones, all I'd have to do is select these two I'm going to merge those together just to make it easy. Or select both of those and go edit, paste special, paste into. And then it's the same thing, except that you're pasting it across two different pictures. And if you don't like it when you do it this way, if there's not like enough clouds on one side or something, You can wiggle it around. Oh, I lied. There's one more thing I'm going to show you. Okay. And real quick, if you want to show depth, uh, give these windows thickness. I'm just started, got created a new frame, 
and I have this black pen. I'm going to pick this purple color here. And if we were looking out this window from inside, it would look like that. See, you wouldn't see the inside edge here, but you would here, here, and here, and that gives it a, a bit of depth. Now, if I come over here, if this is a picture hanging on the wall, oops, then you just see that. And the same thing with the door. If I wanted the door to be recessed in the wall, it would look like that. And if I wanted the door to be in front of the wall, uh, the bevel would be on the other side. Let's again get rid of the perspective grid. And um, we're moving along. Okay, that is a very rudimentary version of how to lay out perspective for your house. Uh, please, you know, feel free to really go to town with it. Um, you can do baseboards. Once you have all this stuff laid out, you can make curtains because you know how they're supposed to fall, right? Yep. Curtain rods just follow that. You can do wall plugs now because you know uh, you can figure out what the perspective is on that. Uh, all sorts of stuff. Go crazy. Put a rug in. Rugs are easy. A rug is. I gotta get rid of this character for a second. And we do every same thing we've always done. Come in here, grab a picture off the internet, edit, paste special, paste into. There's our carpet. Select that. Oh, it's big. Make it a little smaller. And if you want it to match up, you just match the corners. To where they're supposed to be. And see the shadows even over the top of it. Okay, that is perspective grids. Have fun.